this way. I'm ready to fight everybody up in this house. And ain't nobody here but me. So I guess I'll be fighting my damn self. Y'all, I can't find... Now, I typically have like eight to nine hair clips. Girl, y'all, are y'all getting a lot of calls? Um, like spam calls? I, I feel like the calls about your student loans are getting worse. And look, um, one guy was telling me, he's like, you know what? When the application comes available, go ahead and do it right, right away. Because there's rumors that we can get more... Um, it, it may be more than what we're thinking that we can get forgiven. So do it right away, sis. All right, you guys, this is another chit chat. How are you guys doing? We're going to be chit chatting while figuring out what the heck is going on with my hair. So, ciao. So, um, we know how we do this. My hair was parted down the middle for a change. I normally like to do a deep side part, but it's part down the middle and we're going to be detangling my hair uh, with the African Pride Moisture Miracle Free Shampoo. Okay, so I have a formal review on this. I know y'all really can't get that, but there it is. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm upset because I can't find what the heck I need to really do my hair. So y'all know how we do this. We talk about what I have going on in my personal life, what we or uh, what we y'all like y'all doing this with me but you are because you hear what i'm watching on youtube and what i'm watching on tv so y'all <laughs> right before um i started right before i came on camera i received a message from one of jb's teachers now those of you who don't know jb goes to a private school and in his classroom there are two teachers basically a teacher and then a teacher's aide the teacher aide helps JB's, um, helps his little group, which are the third graders. And I think there are about five kids in third grade. The classroom is split up into third, fourth, and fifth grade. There's only 13 kids in this classroom. So the teacher just sent me a text message. She, the teacher's aide at least just sent me a text message right now saying JB's going to be going home with his uh, math work because it was really hard for him to focus. He really couldn't, you know, couldn't really focus on getting his work done. I'm like, oh my God, okay. I'll talk to him, make sure. So now JB, he's going to have his regular homework and his math. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, you need to get it together. So... I'll give him a little chance to relax when he gets home and he's probably going to have a good 30 minutes of work to do. Um, speaking to my family, they are going to try to make it here to Forney for uh, towards the end of October. Everyone's just busy right now. My sister's busy. My sister's busy making mom's child. It's it's that time of the year right and i love this time of the year it's about to get cooler here in the mornings it's in the 60s um so yeah I'm, i got a wide tooth comb here y'all but i also have a pick i'm gonna use the pick for now let me go in <clears throat> so yeah they're coming hopefully in october i really want them to come and they're coming they're gonna be staying so if they don't come then we're gonna try to make it down before uh november because look I am not going anywhere. And my husband had to remind me. He's like, you don't, you do know it, it ice over here. I'm like, oh yes, honey. I'm not going anywhere. Look, between November and December, I'm not getting on the roads. You will not, I am not going to be caught up on the 80 and some damn black ice. I'm not doing it. So I'm staying home. Um, plus we already talked about, at least my husband and I, we discussed you know who we're gonna have over for the holidays and so he has already invited his family over for thanksgiving and i'm like okay so am i to do traditional african food or he said no no you can do um you can do you know your soul food <laughs> my country ass food because i know how to cook cook both um so i'm like okay it doesn't matter which one it is they, they both gonna take long as hell to cook so um i had gained or starting to pick up some weight <laughs> and so i had to really like be like okay vivian you need to really watch and it's because i've been i have been eating not quite a bit and so got a hold of that and got back to doing a little bit of intermittent fasting let me tell you something if you want to lose weight and not kick off your weight loss try intermittent fasting you guys um i discovered it years ago like five six years ago and so when i need to like 
kickstart eating better i start I, I do intermittent fasting so what i do personally is that i don't start to eat or i don't begin my first meal until 10 o'clock is my first meal i personally stop eating by six o'clock because i'm typically in bed by by seven or no no by nine or ten enough of that what else what else what else i have some stuff here to show y'all because look it's fall i started to buy me some stuff look i started to buy let me show y'all some of the stuff i got i've always had right but then I went ahead, I was like, you know what? I have like three pairs of black boots. Yeah, no, three or four pairs of black boots. And then I have booties, I don't consider that. And then I have like one pair of brown boots. So I need another pair of brown boots. So I picked these up. Aren't these cute? They look a little, uh, it's funny on camera, this looks really, really brown. It doesn't look that brown in person. It really doesn't, but it looks really real. Child, guess where I got these from? Children's Place. I, I'm a size five at the children. Look, it's not my problem that these kids are, are walking around with Fred Flintstone feet, these big ass feet. So I got these <laughs> on sale at the children's place for twenty nine dollars. I also purchased some ready for fall pajamas. I went ahead and purchased JB and I, or I always buy matching PJs for JB and us for um for Christmas. Shout my husband, his big ass ain't gonna get into stuff like that. He probably would just to be comfortable but he ain't gonna be on cam and, and taking pictures in that <laughs> but he probably would do it for jamie just to be you know just for the baby but anyway um so yeah you guys that's going okay so what i'm watching on youtube watching a uh, going back and looking at some of the uh true crime podcasts which is really good still i hold on y'all I was going to because I told y'all sometimes I like to look at reaction videos and so I went back and was trying to find a young African-American couple black couple they're fairly fairly young I think they're under the age of 33 or so and I think they're from the south either Florida or like Arkansas or something and so I decided to look them up and see what's going on for well, their last video which was from a month ago says pray for pray for s dot I believe that's how you say his name, S-D-O-T. And it's a couple, Holly and S-Dot. It says, pray for S-Dot. And then down below in the comments, it's like, rest in peace. Oh my God, I can't believe you're gone. I'm like, what the hell happened? So I started to watch the video. And granted, they're young, so they're a little ratchet. So he's using some heavy language. But overall, I like their reaction videos because they're, they're just a cute couple. Apparently, this young man had to undergo two surgeries on his heart. And this is something he's always had. He, he has always, from what I understand, he always had this issue, this medical issue for, to pertain to his heart. And unfortunately, he passed away. He died during surgery. I at least want to understand he passed from complications of the surgery. And what is so just jaw jaw dropping is doing a video he's basically saying if i don't make it if this doesn't if this doesn't make it y'all keep holly down you know be checking up on her and i'm like i'm wondering if you know it was possibly communicated to him that there's this is a risky surgery you know i don't know and he didn't they didn't really talk much about it during the video but that's what I'm assuming, but you know, we can't make assumptions, but that's just really sad. And I think she, meaning the girlfriend, Holly had posted <clears throat> a couple of weeks after his death that she doesn't even feel like living anymore because that's her, that's her first love. Someone she's been with since she was in high school and <sighs> that's just so sad. So, so, so sad. Um, was on Instagram a couple of days ago and Brooke Bailey those of you who don't know Brooke Bailey I the reason why I love me some Brooke Bailey Brooke Bailey is an OG video vixen and I love Brooke because she is chocolate like milk chocolate she and then she's up there Brooke is not young I think Brooke is over 50 if not she's pushing 50 but anyway um she was in uh basketball wives but she was also on this reality tv show back when reality tv was getting really hot and you had to do with deal with video vixens <clears throat> but brooke bailey was in um wipe me down video she was in one of Nicki minaj's Nicki minaj's video but she's been around for a minute 
unfortunately her daughter who she's only 25 years old she passed away which is so sad and i believe that's her only child if i if i remember correctly her only child um 25 years old 25 years old I believe she passed away in a car accident absolutely horrible so people were leaving leaving their condolences on her instagram it's just sad they're sad 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 so all of that's going on. I, I hate y'all. I know this is doom and gloom. Um, child Tim and Sweetie Pie, Miss Robbie's son, was finally <clears throat> found um, guilty of the murder of his nephew. Now, I went back and started to watch some of those old, because they have them on YouTube, some of the old clips of um when andre was there with his grandma miss robbie and when he was with charles I'm like, i love charles and you know the thing that gets me about tim and tim and miss robbie's big wide ass hip son and i know i know that you can't control the way you look like but since he wants to sit up here and smile in his mug shot and kill his you know murder for hire take out his nephew for some money i'm gonna talk about your hips anyway y'all so i'm like i'm watching some of the old episodes this man is sick as hell because he's taking miss robbie back to the spot where andre was murdered and i guess this is like right in front of the grandma's house like his grandmother's house like it's the same area and i guess in that same vicinity like within two blocks or so his father was killed and then his cousin was killed you have to be a sick type of person to walk around and be okay showing your mama where, where her grandbaby died he didn't shed not one tear no empathy he's cold as hell um, and, and then at one point he's seeing that there's only three men left in their family, including himself. Well, now that his ass is going to jail, there's only two of them left that's, you know, free. That is just absolutely horrible. Now, the thing that trips me trips me out and Ms., is Miss Robbie is saying that Tim's her son. She's going to always love him and she's going to support him. Let me tell you something. I get that that's your baby and some people are like that they will ride or die for their children if my child is caught guilty taking the life let alone a family member but taking the life of another individual i'm not supporting your ass i will forever love you because you you are part of me but i'm not supporting you I'm not going to be calling you. I'm not putting nothing on. What do you call it? I'm not putting nothing on your books or nothing. No, that's not happening. I'm not sending you cards for Christmas and Easter and all this other book. Absolutely not. Because y'all, from what I understand, Miss Robbie is suing a YouTuber on here. Yeah. Um, she has several videos actually about the case, which she has every right to do. But I don't know if it's slander or what the case is going to be, what the charges are going to be. But... She has a lawsuit against this other YouTuber because of some of the stuff she's been saying about Miss Robbie and Tim. Let's go on to some ratchet good stuff. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about what we watched on TV. So, child, I decided to watch some um, some movies I hadn't seen in a while and some just some new movies. Um, I got the... I don't know if I said this, um, but I rewatched Jason's Lyric, which hits differently when you grown, child. I'm like, ooh... Oh, Trish, she, he had her like that and back me the garbage can in the aisle. Uh-uh. So I rewatched that. It was interesting. It was good. Um, I watched Flowers in the Attic again. Crazy as V.C. Andrews movie. Rewatched that. Also rewatched um, uh, To Die For with Nicole Kidman regarding the Pamela Smart case. Remember that case, you guys, where the teacher ended up having an affair with the student and the student killed her husband, Pamela Smart. Rewatched that. Um, and then I got Amazon Prime for like seven days and watched a couple of Prime videos. So I watched Troy again. T I don't I know I'm not pronouncing it right. T R O I S. 
watched a couple of Medea movies. Look, after a couple of, I can't handle Tyler Perry movies that much. I could do a few in like two in a row and that's it. And I need, I need to switch to something else for a while. It's the weird looking black guy from Marriage Counselor, that Temptation uh, movie. Um, it was called Always and Forever. You guys, this movie was actually kind of good. It had, who was in it? It had D. Woods. And what is the guy name? I'm sorry, but he looks a little weird looking. I know everybody can be fine and as wine, but I mean, he's handsome, Robert Lee Jones. And it's called Always and Forever. It was actually not that bad. I mean, there was some stuff that I had to rewrite and be like, okay, that doesn't, I mean, there was some stuff I was like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. But overall, I liked the movie. Again, it's on um, All Black on Amazon Prime because I had it for a little bit. So, yeah, y'all trying to watch some of these old movies, rewatch Children of Men. I love the movie. I was crying. I was like, okay, Vivian, this is not that serious. Um, with Julianne Moore and that English actor, British, excuse me, English, whatever. <sighs> so, girl, what I've been watching series, let me tell you something. I watched, because I've been hearing about it, I started to watch Dahmer. Y'all, when you want to talk about the first episode, my anxiety was so dang on high. I'm like, okay, you know what? <laughs> don't drink nothing. Don't eat nothing. Don't, don't, don't do anything over his house because you don't know what you're going to have. So the thing that gets me is that I didn't realize that Jeffrey Dahmer was living in a predominantly black area. Um, I knew that the vast majority of his um, victims were men of color, but I didn't know that he was living in that area. Now, one thing that I did know, and I think that they they reveal in the actual movie, is that he came from... This doesn't justify anything. doesn't justify your ass cooking and eating up people. He came from a very broken home. Um, his parents got divorced. His mother ended up having postpartum depression right after she had her child. I personally think she may have had, I'm not a doctor, so I shouldn't be diagnosing people, so I'm not gonna say that. I was thinking maybe she was schizophrenia, but it turned out to be postpartum depression. His family neglected him. When his father uh, divorced the mother, he just left. And at one point, Jeffrey Dahmer was left at home by himself at like 18. Now, I knew that before this movie came out because just based off of another documentary I had seen about his life, he was just left at home. The mother just came home and took the child and left. And the father didn't know that he was at home by himself because Jeffrey was like okay with that because his ass was, it was at home, you know, messing around with these with these men. So he, he was actually okay with that. You know what I mean? So... Um, child didn't know that he went in the army. His daddy was done with his ass. He's like, you gonna get a job. Couldn't hold a job. He did everything from being a butcher. Then was caught at the fair, um, uh, doing some inappropriate stuff at the fair. They're like, okay, you can't come back here and work anymore. So then he worked at the candy store. Couldn't hold a job. Couldn't hold it down. Living with his grandma, grandma smelling stuff. She's like, Jeff, what's that smell? He's like, oh, it's my taxidermy stuff, grandma. <laughs> and so she's like, well, you need to throw it out. He's like, okay, grandma. And he's like, he ain't throwing out that stuff. And it's nasty as hell. The daddy kept coming in. He's like, Jeff, what's that smell? What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> and so finally said, okay, you know what? This is it. You need to move out. You driving your grandma crazy. And that's when he moved into the apartment. And that's when things really spiraled out of control. But wait a minute. The thing that tripped me out, y'all, is when he stole that damn uh, mannequin. <laughs> he stole that mannequin. He had that mannequin in the bed. He kissing and hugging that mannequin. I'm like, okay, there you go, Jeff. Get you a big ass doll. And you, you don't have to kill nobody. Just hug, hug up on that doll. Do whatever you want to that doll. Child, his grandma came in that room. She saw something underneath the covers. She pulled back that bed sheet and saw that big ass silver ass uh, mannequin. He said, "Um, where, where, where did my dog go? He didn't say dog, but you know, y'all know. He's like, where did my mannequin go? She said, oh, I um threw that out. Why did, where did you get that from? He said, don't worry about that, grandma. What did you do with my dog? She's like, I threw that out, baby. Um, The trash man came to get it. 
child, he lost his shit. He's like, that was my partner. <laughs> that was his love doll. Uh-uh. So, I don't think I'm going to finish the series, you guys. And this is why. I'm a softie. Apparently, the victims of the family... They didn't get notified about this show. They, of course, are not being compensated. Um, and they are saying that they didn't even know about it until it came out. They didn't, They knew about it the same time we knew. And so this is re-traumatizing for them. And it's for, for the survivors, too. I think he had one survivor, actually. It's re-traumatizing. So, let me see. But the first three episodes seem to be good. It's just very, very dark. Of course, Ryan Murphy's crazy ass did it. Now, I can't wait for Wednesday's Child. That is coming up. And I can't wait. There's a Stephen King short story that they're bringing on Netflix. Oh. The Tall Grass is another one. Mr. Harrington's Phone. It's creepy as hell as a short story and they're turning it into a, a net, well, it's going to be a Netflix movie. Really excited. Now, something that was very surprising that I watched and I just was like, okay, what is this about? It's called Sins of the Mother. Now, this has to do with that case where the um, six-year-old child and his sister, I believe she was 16 years old, they were missing. Y'all remember that? They were missing for a long time and they unfortunately ended up finding their bodies on their parents um property what i tell i'm not going to give a lot of spoilers when i tell you this case is nothing like i i have never heard of so much freaking foolery in my life it has everything in this in this series from Oh, God, y'all. Um, I'm trying to find the words to, to say right now. It has everything from radicalized religion, zombies, yes, zombies, good and evil, the devil, bonkers, end of the world. Like, they were very, very obsessed with the idea of the world ending. They thought they were gods. Um, the main character what is his name his name is chad there were so many people chad her name was Lori val Rowe, if i remember correctly correctly his name meaning the man name was chad daybill chad had came up with this system this grading system that graded people light or dark so you either had like a light spirit or a dark spirit um, and they even had family members they had categorized that he had categorized and it was like on a scale I think of four so you could be light one two three or four you could be dark one two three or four I think you could even be like a decimal point like 4.1 because I believe the daughter was like a, a dark 4.1 at a certain point from what I understand at a certain at a certain point you could be so dark that you become a zombie the only way to free this person is to kill them. This is the most disturbing case I've seen, you guys, seriously. And this is seriously one of the most disturbing cases I've heard of. There are so many deaths tied to this family. First off, there are at least, if, if I can remember correctly, about five deaths. Everything from the spouses to the children, to potential, to, uh, oh, her, her, her niece's ex fiance was shot at, another woman was shot at, and then what they were doing in their cult, they were marrying each other very fast. Like within two weeks of knowing each other, they were married. Cause they figured if you, you will probably married in a previous life because they do believe in, in, you know, previous lives, and that once you find each other again on this current life, go ahead and marry real fast. <sighs> I looked at some of the, they have some some of his old podcasts, Chat Daybell on YouTube. It makes me wonder, how can people just, 
how can any of this make sense when someone tells you that they know the exact date when the world is going to end how what makes you think that anything that they say is true I mean, girl, the handmaid's tell. What did I tell y'all? What did I tell y'all? Spoiler alert. I will be giving spoiler alerts. It is what it is, child. Um, first off, I'm a little upset that I didn't get to see Nick that much on this episode because I have a crush on Nick. Now, Nick isn't necessarily, this is the thing about the actor that plays Nick. I don't think that he's really that, hold on. I don't think that he's really that handsome. Like when I see him, I'm like, oh God, he's handsome. But he's fine. He is fine. There's something about that quiet, deadly type. He's going to sit up here. He either going to uh, put it in real good or, or he may he may slap you. So you just don't know what to expect. So you, <laughs> hell, you, you may want both. You know, you know, you may want both, but... Nick's not like that because under all of that toughness, he has a soft spot, soft spot, excuse me. So I think that for me, that's a part of his attractiveness too. So, um, y'all, I told y'all Serena, Serena is a problem. She's going to be a problem. So off the last episode, we see that Serena got to have Fred's, well, it's been a couple of episodes, but she was able to have Fred's, her husband, Commander Fred, funeral back over in Gilead, right? So, the um, the one guy over in Canada that's kind of helping her and, you know, everyone else. Let me find out his name, y'all. I just be telling y'all stuff. Don't even be getting the person's damn name right. Mark. Mr. Mark. Now, quiet as it kept, I think that she's pregnant by Mark. I think that Fred was shooting uh, blanks. That's why June couldn't get pregnant. So Mark Tulio has a crush on Serena. You know, he's kind of feeling her. So he tells her, he's like, you know what, Serena, why don't you come back? You know, Gilead is not safe here for, for women. You know this. Why don't you come back? And she's like, you know what, Fred? Oh, is that his name, y'all? I'm talking to Fred. Mark. You know what, Mark? It's okay. Um, I know you got a piece of this, but... <laughs> Yeah, I'm all over the place. I know you, you, you know, you like this. And so, y'all, she got real close to him and gave him a kiss on the cheek. Baby bumping all, y'all. And was like, okay, um, I, I gotta go. So, he leaves because the plane is waiting for him, right? And so, Serena is like, the commanders, all the commanders need to speak to her. And I'm like, oh, hell, what it is. So, Commander, the one with all the white hair, y'all, what's his name? Commander Lawrence with all the white hair. Serena's sitting there in front of all of these distinguished men, you know, the, all the commanders, right? And he's like, you know what, Serena, um, you are a very unique and interesting woman. And unfortunately, and, and you you only got nine fingers. So those you don't know, um, her husband had one of her fingers chopped off. I think she disobeyed him or something. It's like, I think it was an index ring. Was it an index ring or a ring? Girl, regardless, she got four fingers on one hand. So, you no, know, he said, you're a very, like, unique and interesting woman. Yeah, I don't know what he said. But you're a very unique and interesting woman. You got nine damn fingers. You ain't got no husband. You ain't got no family. Um... We don't have, you know, a place for your ass here, Gilead. So, you know, what we're going to need for you to do is go back over to Canada because we need for you to represent us over there. And she's looking a little like, she's like a little shocked, y'all, because she thought she was home. So, baby, when she get back on that plane and you can see Mark, he's like looking at her. She's going back, sitting down. And he's like, they told us to hold the plane. I guess we see why. And so she sits down like, you, whatever, you ain't gonna never get this. You know, that's what she's probably thinking. But <laughs> that's not what really happens. Now, June is off. Y'all, June is on the tail end. She is really, like, losing it. At one point, she had Serena shook. I think she ran up on Serena's um, car and was like, don't you ever touch my daughter again. I'm like, oh, my God. Now, her daughter is she's gotten out of wearing pink to now she was dressed in purple so june calls nick up and she's like what does purple mean well what does this mean he's like she's ready he's like she's ready for what you know what does the purple mean and nick basically tells june that purple means she's ready to be a wife 
Now, I would rather her be a wife than a handsmaid, but considering that I'll, the, the wives and up uh, just really turning you know what i mean so y'all besides that you got the girl with the one eye her and the one eye uh yeah i'm sorry the girl with the one eye and old girl poisoned those chocolates because she's like i thought you were my friend you're not my friend you're like everyone else so they ate all those chocolates and you don't know if she's gonna live or not child she woke up the next morning when um off she was like, praise be. Offering, is that her name? Offering was like, Aunt Lydia, cut the shit. I'm not here for this. Uh, I know how you really are. So they come to an almost agreement because what happened was Aunt Lydia approached one of the governor, one of the commanders and was like, I think that the handmaids, I should watch them and they should just stay with me. And the commander is like, what's wrong with you? Are you crazy? You know that these men want to basically have sex with these girls, rape them. That's just, just call it what it is. They want to rape them and have sex with them whenever they want to. That would never happen. So Aunt Lydia and a one-eyed girl have come to an agreement that, okay, we're going to work together and I'm going to help you with these hussies so they don't be trying to you know poison us again you i know, think that things are about to really get heated up because if you guys don't see june received that invitation that there's going to be an embassy almost like an embassy set up gilead embassy set up in in canada and they already have a few people were um when um serena got sent back to canada she had a few women and men actually outside like waiting for her waiting just to see her Child, it's about to get interesting. It's about to get heated. I think that Handmaid's Tale has one more season left. And of course, this season just started. So we got another season left of this. So we'll see what happens, y'all. All right, y'all. I've been talking a lot. I know this is all over the place. This is it. I hope you guys have a good one. Take care. Bye.